building new airfields in India, United Nations forces are preparing bases from which to speed the flow of supplies to Allied armies gathering in the Far East. Working with primitive tools, natives from nearby villages quickly learn to construct airstrips capable of handling the biggest bombers. Women work side by side with the men. Soon they see the great war birds roar in. In New Guinea, General MacArthur with Generals Kruger and Rupertus inspects new positions won from the Japs in the North, Central and Southwest Pacific. In Burma, British and Indian troops advance against Japanese patrols, open up with artillery on enemy positions in the hills above the Chidwin River. Today, Allied action in the Far East has the Japanese on the defensive. <laughs> Members of a Sydney, Australia College of Physical Culture put on a show of mass calisthenics for an appreciative audience at a military hospital. Performing with rhythm and precision, the girls bring a light, cheerful note to wounded soldiers convalescing in the land down under. In Texas, home of the Badgett Quadruplets, the famous little girls prepare to celebrate their fifth birthday. First, they bake a birthday cake. Then, being good housekeepers, they clean up the kitchen. takes the cake from the oven, and magic, even the candles are lighted. In their own bedroom, the four little girls dress up for the party. Jeanette and Geraldine, ready for the time of their young lives. At an Army-Navy Recreation Center, they share their birthday with men in the service. This year, their best birthday gifts are war bonds. From newly won airfields in southern Italy, United States bombers escorted by fighter planes attacked German supply lines feeding Nazi armies around Rome. Target for today, the great marshalling yards outside the Italian capital. With Allied air power controlling the skies over the Mediterranean, the eyes of the United Nations are upon the 5th and 8th armies gathered before Rome. Here, the plane of General Mark Clark, 5th Army commander, brings the general back from an inspection tour of outlying positions.
Blasting Nazi emplacements in the hills is typical of artillery action along the entire Italian front. Through ruined towns less than 30 miles from Rome, men of the 5th Army push inland from their new beachheads at Neptuno and Anzio. German prisoners swarm to the rear. Passing lines of heavy tanks moving up, the Nazis are loaded aboard the same invasion boats that brought the United Nations forces to Italy. Refugees from Yugoslavia land at an Italian port. Ferried across the Adriatic by the Allies, they find here a temporary haven from their embattled homeland. American food is assigned to the camp to feed these hungry allies of the United Nations. For some, it is the first sight of substantial food in many months. Women and children of Yugoslavia have been as brave as their men in resisting Nazi aggression. Now they await in safety for the day of peace when they can return to their own country. war chiefs meet in London to plan the strategy of invasion. In supreme command, General Dwight Eisenhower, with General Sir Bernard Montgomery as chief of British forces. This is the cameraman's first chance to film them together, mapping the attack. Air Marshal Sir Arthur Tedder left, is General Eisenhower's deputy commander. The air arm to play an important role. Today, Britain is a mighty arsenal. Great squadrons of fighters, bombers, gather for the day. At air depots, spare engines, replacement parts, forests of new propellers are assembled. Shells and bombs of every kind, light explosives, demolitions, incendiaries by the acres, by the tons, are scattered throughout the island. Commanding the most powerful armies the world has ever known, the Allied leaders are ready.